Hey guys, I'm all back again. Welcome to day 64 in the life of the Galaxy S23. Today I'm going to talk about the single take mode and the pros and cons of it. I started using it more recently. For those who are not aware, if you go inside of your camera settings and you scroll all the way over to single take mode, it may be buried in the deepest setting. You have to drag it out. I just leave it on the outside so I don't need to go in the deep setting to get it every time. But essentially it allows you to record a 10 to 15 second clip and then it will create you a bunch of different clips. Some, some of the options they have include different variation of the photo. Sometimes they do a grayscale photo and a couple of different options for you there. Sometimes they do a boomerang clip, a fast forward clip and occasionally they'll add music as well. So Samsung just automatically generate all different kind of clips for you. And I started using this more on my last vacation in Hawaii. Just to save time, if you're at a cool spot, just pan your camera for 10 to 15 seconds. Although one flaw I noticed that it is a little shaky. I didn't really notice it on my phone, but when I went back later to watch some of the videos, they do appear shakier. So maybe OIS is not really present when you're using single take mode. This is interesting to see because regular video recording is fine. Phone can handle a lot whether you're walking or running. Overall, it tends to be pretty stable. But single take mode, just be aware of the pros and cons there. Let me know if anybody else uses single take mode. I didn't really use it that much in the past, but I started doing it more recently. Now I may or may not go back and forth with it due to the fact that I realized the video do look shakier. Or maybe it's got to hold my phone more still and not swing it around like a madman. But anyways, let's jump into day 64. So another work day for me. Woke up at about 6 a.m. in the morning and at 51 I came across an article about how this Pixel user switch over to the Galaxy S23 and I'm always curious to hear people's thoughts and perspective. So the first reason they give is the Google Pixel launcher. I don't really care too much about the launcher to be honest. Google Pixel is very simple and basic. Some people do enjoy the simplicity. Samsung One UI got a lot of options and customizations. I don't really customize that much anymore either. So my eyes just adopt to the UI, so not a big difference for me. Second reason to talk about is the haptics. I hear people talk about haptics a lot, but for me, I honestly don't really care that much about it. Whether the phone vibrate a little or a lot, those things don't really matter to me as long as it's fast and it works. That's really the biggest thing that I really ask for in a phone and a good camera, I guess, and a good battery. Haptics for me doesn't really bother me that much. The reason why this person missed most from the Google Pixel 7 is the lock screen clock. I actually think the Pixel lock screen clock is pretty plain and basic. I know it's a big number, but I think the Samsung always on display. This allows you more customization. You can add your own pictures on it. You can add a GIF, just do so much more. I know some people just prefer the super basic look. It's all personal preference. You can go one way or the other. And next thing to talk about is performance, which is odd because Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is the fastest and most powerful Android trip out there. But I guess they're just talking about just the snappiness and moving and the animation, little things like that. They prefer the Pixel experience more. Honestly, for me, I'm scrolling back and forth between apps. I don't really notice that much of a difference. Seems like a clickbaity article. I don't see anything that really stood out to me so far of the five reasons that the naming and lastly to talk about the camera i guess they prefer the pixel camera more this is always up to a subjective thing as well during blind camera tests pixel camera tends to fare pretty well i'll give them reason number five the samsung s23 do get the blurriness issue when you take close-up photos i don't remember experiencing that when i used the pixel and look forward to using the pixel 7a soon when it comes out for me personally what i miss most from the google pixel is the feature when you're inside of store or random places, the ability to auto detect music without you having to look it up. I always think that's pretty cool. It always just pick it up, got it on a playlist. You can just go into the playlist later, even if you don't access it at a time, it's just always accumulating all the stats. So whenever I hear new cool new songs as I'm walking around, I always like that Google and just pick it up without me having to search it every single time. The biggest thing that I miss from the Google Pixel series is also their recording app. Super useful for meetings, you can just record, it can detect 
speakers, even though the, it's terrible. But I like the ability to go back and search my notes later. Very helpful and very convenient. So look forward to using those again in the near future. And for breakfast, we got some spam and eggs. Another blurry photo for you guys. In the afternoon, drove to Honeydew, grab some mid-afternoon coffee break for dinner. We got some pho at pho 89 and also some um aka vermicelli with pork and shrimp. And in the evening, I had some friends over to watch the Celtics game. Even though I am a Warriors fan at heart, I still gotta root for my hometown team to make it as far as they can. And who knows, maybe we'll have another finals we match. So essentially today, mostly just worked. I had my phone on a wireless charger occasionally out of habit. I start work at 9 and by close to 9 p.m. Have close to 14 hours of battery life there. You do see there's a peak here and there when I was using a wireless charger or when I'm driving. So close to 14 hours of battery life, maybe subtract an extra hour. So that's pretty consistent with my experience on this phone. 12 to 13 hours of battery life, three and a half hours of screen on time. Today I did some Pokemon Go, always on display, taking up battery. I decided to turn that back on. Snapchat here and there and Google Play services doing weird stuff in the background. Other than that, nothing too crazy. So this wraps up day 64 in the life of the Galaxy S23. I know some people may have questions on whether or not I would recommend this phone or not. I personally would still recommend it if you can get it on sale. $700 is a pretty decent price for a powerful flagship phone that is compact. The only downside is the close-up photos. If you don't take up a lot of photos, you'll be fine. But just in terms of performance, everyday usage, gaming is pretty good. Um, taking photos far away is fine. Everything is smooth. So it all depends what you use your phone for. I do wish it has micro SD support, but that is long gone at this point. The only reason I still talk about it is I have my S20 with me and I still enjoy the micro SD. It's just a little annoying that little by little, taking away features. And even though the S23 have a really good fingerprint sensor, I do think the coverage area is very small, so I do tend to miss it pretty often. But when I hit it right, it's super fast, but if I'm just a millimeter off, it does not read, and that happened to me pretty often. But other than that, face unlock is there, smart body detection and all that, so there are other ways to get around it, or you can just pass code. There's a lot of options to unlock your phone, but just the fingerprint sensor does create a little bit of friction for me here and there. Alright guys, so once again, this wrap up day 64. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover. Please check out my 9 weeks review if you haven't already. At this point, I think we're pretty much nearing the end of this phone. I hit on almost every single topic. Um, at some point or another, I will do a final, final review. Send this guy off. I am looking forward to the Google Pixel 7a. And then around the summer, we'll look forward to the flip, the folds, and maybe even the Pixel Fold as well. So a lot of fun phones to look forward to this summer. We'll continue to test all those out as they come out. Thank you for the support as usual. Remember to like and subscribe. I see you guys in the next video.